In view of the current ICU occupancy rates, the Health Ministry said last night it has been working with hospitals to set aside more ICU beds for COVID-19 patients. 100 more beds will be ready next week. Well, as at last night, there were 360 ICU beds in total. 146 are occupied by COVID-19 patients, with 67 critically ill and 79 under close monitoring. The current overall ICU utilization rate is 79.2%. Professor Dale Fisher is here. He's a senior consultant at NUH's Division of Infectious Diseases. Welcome back to the show, Prof. So 360 ICU beds at that yesterday. Another 100 will be ready next week. With the current wave, Prof, do you foresee that many COVID-19 patients will need intensive care? Uh, th thanks, Olivia. It's really about managing the capacity. It's of course, more people will go on forever more needing intensive care for COVID and other reasons, but it's about the, the rate of increase. So if, for instance, five people come off uh, a ventilator one day and five go on, then that's obviously stable. So, um, so uh, and I think that's what we've seen. We're seeing a lot, um, uh, much more of a plateau effect compared to a month or two months ago when the numbers were were, were, were clearly climbing because we were having so many extra cases. Now it's actually much flatter. I think there's very little chance that we'll see, uh, you know, the, the numbers jump by, by 20 very quickly. Um, not unless you did something almost reckless with all the restrictions, but by the same token, you're not going to see it um, uh, suddenly fall by 20 because because uh, that would need a lockdown and, and then wait three weeks. And, uh, and of course, we don't need to do that and nobody wants that. Exactly. Well, most, most days this month have had over 3,000 new cases. Now, these are high numbers, but relatively stable. And if this continues, Prof, the reproduction rate will not get below one, which is a key indicator of whether Singapore eases restrictions. But if we don't tighten measures further, which we actually haven't done since September, then how will the R rate be brought lower? So we really uh, need to think about the phases of a surge. So initially, you obviously see a, a steep climb and then it plateaus off and, and eventually it starts to come down. That, that's what happens. So, so you, just because we're sort of turning the corner, we're going onto that plateau doesn't mean we're going to stay at the plateau over the next one, two, four weeks. I don't know. We, we will start to see that come down. And, and there are reasons for that. Um, partly there's less people to infect. So they've all got uh, a lot more people have got natural immunity. Um, maybe people are being a bit more conservative in their, in their exposures. Um, and we know even though the rate of vaccination has, has slowed a lot, um, there are still people getting vaccinated and, and joining that sort of safe part of the community. So, so I think we will see it tail off because, as, as the minister said, surges don't don't last forever. Waves don't last forever. They will come off. M most importantly, though, the the wave in in the hospitals, um, it's still the the five or six percent of the unvaccinated people. As you know, we're up at about ninety four percent now of uh, of. Uh, of fully vaccinated eligible people, it's that very small number of unvaccinated that, that are still um, accounting for the lion's share of, of hospital utilisation. So, so this is what, um, again, we need to, to keep focusing on. Um, but, but it's also another reason why we will see this, this wave eventually come down and, and with that more easing of restrictions.